Well, hello everyone. My name is Rick Pasek, the Fly Fish Fanatic, and welcome to my tying bench. Uh, today we'll be tying a, uh, it's a little experimental pattern that I've come up with. Uh, uh, I mean, it's 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 a little bit of a one pattern and a little bit of another pattern, a little bit of a third pattern. So it's kind of something that I'm I've been playing with in the in the winter time here and uh, gonna be uh, giving her a giving her a go uh, this uh, coming spring and summer. Um, I think it's going to be a really good pattern um, and the reason is because it's it's a combination of, uh, of three different patterns that are all good so we'll see we'll see how it goes so um, <clears throat> I will start off with switching it over first of all <clears throat> I'm going to start off with a um, an A-Rex in a size 8 freshwater series it's a curved nymph hook hard to see there but it is a size 8 there you go so I'll start off with that and it is a uh, this is a it is a booby that I'm tying, um, but like I said, with a bit of a twisty twist. So, okay, so um, you can tie it with uh, straight booby tubes if you like, um, if you can find them, and if you want to pay the price for them because they're not cheap. Um, or you can use these here. These are the preformed. These are uh, I guess I think these are rainies, <clears throat> but they're not cheap. So. Um, I don't have very many left, and I don't think I'll buy them again just because of the price. Um, because I can, with the uh, the way I was taught by Gary Hankey on how to tie in the uh, the booby tubes, you get pretty well the same result, right? So, <clears throat> excuse me. I don't know, I must have a uh, some sort of an allergy or something to milk products because every time I have a anything with milk in it, my throat gets all. It's all uh, gooey, and I always I'm constantly uh, <clears throat> clearing my throat. So I just put a little bit of just a dab of crazy glue on. Um, so when I put my booby eye on here, it'll it'll just sit a little bit better, just a little bit, right? And, and I mean, it was a little bit. So then just tie on my booby eye. <clears throat> Just figure eighting it and then I'll go four or five times one way, four or five times another way. And I'll figure eight it one more time just to make sure it's in there. And that's pretty good. So now I'm just gonna put a base layer down, down to about where the bend will start, roughly about there. Come back right behind the eye here. <clears throat> um, using a Marabou feather. This happens to be hen's marabou. So, as you can see, I've already taken some off of this side, so I'm going to do the same. Just grab, tear, fold, tear, fold. I'm just making a little package here of marabou. <clears throat> Sorry, guys. <laughs> So I got my little package of marabou. I do want a fairly long tail because I can always clip this out in the field. So about like that. So I'm going to right about there. I'm going to grab and I'm going to nip that off. Into my waist bin. And I'm just going to place that right behind the eye. And then get that tied in nicely. And just tie that in. Open wraps back to where... You stopped about there, give or take. Now there's two ways you can go about this. You can either have I could have built up a, a little bit of a a little bit of a uh, a ball there, a dubbing ball. I'm just gonna try to focus that a little bit better for you guys there. <clears throat> could have built up a little bit of a sorry a thread ball right at the end to help hold it up, or you can just lift your tail and go in behind and over. And behind and pull it forward and over and that'll help not have it uh, tangle on you now I'm gonna wet this a bit just to keep it under control okay <clears throat> come forward then I'm gonna grab some of this uh, flashaboo it's number 6921 okay it's got that silvery blue kind of to it some of them are silver, some of them are blue. 
So what basically what this fly is is it's a it's a it's kind of a of a mix of a blue flash damsel, a booby, and a woolly bugger. So it's kind of like I said, it's just an experiment that I've been playing with um, on the bench, and I hope to give it a good run this year. Um, I think it'll be a winner personally, but uh, we'll only the fish will be able to tell me if it is or not. So now I've got about three or four strands. I'm just going to lay it down on, on my side here. This stuff is a little bit on the supple side, so it does want to, it does kind of end up getting a little unruly sometimes, but you can just get it down and then you can come back and then get this stuff on your side right to the tie-in point of the tail. Then just go just a smidge longer than the tail, just a smidge, and cut it off. Like I said, the stuff can get a little bit unruly, but you just give it a nice, uh, just wet it a bit, and then it's all the way around. And when that gets in, when that gets really wet, it'll get it right in there. So now I'm just going to come forward just a touch. <clears throat> I'm going to take a piece of dyed green grizzle, grizzly hackle. Uh, I'm going to get one that is not too too big uh, if I can find one that's not too big I don't have a, this one's uh, getting near its end for these smaller-ish flies so I'm just gonna take it and just tie it in right by the tip here and this I'm just gonna offer it up and then as I come back you can see I'm gonna stroke back these fibers so I don't catch them there, so it's a nice tie-in point there. Okay. Then I'm going to, in this case, you can use pretty well any blue icy type dubbing. Um, this one here is uh, from Umqua Feather Merchants. It's a uh, uh, crystal seal kingfisher blue. I love kingfisher blue. I always have, especially for for um, uh, coho salmon, steelhead. Just kingfisher blue is my absolute favorite color for them. So, but. Uh, I really like it for these these blue flash damsels as well as well. So I'm just gonna take a little bunch. Make sure my hackle stays out of the way here. And then I'm gonna do a little dubbing loop. Now I could do a, a split thread, but I find the dubbing loops for this is really good because it you end up <clears throat> you end up with a bit of a tighter um, dubbing no, uh, noodle, and that's what I want for this one. I don't want a like a leech style, um, I don't want it to be like long and fuzzy. I want it to create a nice body, right? So, so I'm just gonna put that in my dubbing loop. I spread it, give it a really good spin. I want this, like I said, a fairly tight noodle and not too bushy. So you see that it's a little on the bushy side. So now I'll take my uh, dubbing brush with the Velcro part and I'll just kind of pull some of it out. Make sure I don't get my, that's what I mean by the flash, can be a little on the unruly side sometimes here. But So I'm just going to give one more spin just to tighten up that stuff. And then I'll start putting it on <clears throat> right at the back. And then touching wraps come forward. You don't want to see the, any, well, I mean, it, I don't think it'd be a killer if you see any of the green underneath, but... Um, Tie that off, right behind your eye. See how I'm kind of going in between the eyes and then that way I know I got it tied off really nice. Push my thread out of the way, nip off my dubbing loop, take my hackle, make sure my tail and stuff stays back. And then just one right at the back. And then about four or five turns up and then right behind the eye I want like two or three of these longer fibers okay and then I'm going to tie that off tie that off try to stroke back everything if you can nip off your hackle <clears throat> I 
<clears throat> so I just nipped off that hackle. Now you got some of these stray fibers. You can either try right now to turn it upside down and then just get all that material back because you're going to come back in front now to the eye of the hook and just get in there. Um, and then if you don't get them all, I just take a, t a lighter to them later. So now I'm just going to do a whip finish. Six turn, good enough, more than good enough actually. Nip that off. And then like I said, I can just turn that over and just give it a quick little, just make sure you stroke back all the stuff and just give that a quick burn. So just so the stuff that's in the, uh, or in the eye, if there is any there, that comes off and then you can just put a little dab of head cement and you're finished. So that's my little blue flash damsel bugger. How's that? That's what I'll call it. Um, um, blue flash booby uh, bugger. Sorry. So yeah, it's uh, like I said. I'm just uh, experimenting a little bit and playing around. This one here's got uh, it. The fibers are just uh, the uh, hackle fibers are just a bit shorter. As an example, and like I said, that stuff can get unruly, but. A little shorter fibers on that one but once you get this wet all these that flash right it'll just it'll get right in there nicely and keeps popping out because I keep forgetting to lock it there right so and then yeah, that'll 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 pulsate those those little uh, hackle fibers will pulsate and that blue in there and like I said I think it's gonna be a winner so uh, we'll find out I'll uh, Hopefully, guys, you guys enjoyed the, the video itself, but I'll give you guys an update in the in the spring summer once I've used it and uh, let you guys know how it uh, how it works. So, all right, I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, give her a thumbs up. If you uh, subscribed, thank you. If you have not, please consider doing so. And uh, yeah, spread the word, and we'll uh, see you guys on the next uh, tying video. Tie lines, everyone.